everybody, Stephen Key here. Oh, I want to talk about a couple questions that um, someone had asked. Um, Tony, I'm directing this at you because I think you asked some really great questions. If you're someone that has a lot of ideas, do you file a provisional patent application for every one of your ideas? And what about making sell sheets? I mean, sell sheets can be anywhere from, I don't know, $100 to $200. And if you have a lot of ideas, I mean, you're still spending thousands of dollars, right? Okay, there, there's, there's, there's a couple ways of getting around that. And the reason why I like this, this, this question so much, it made me look back at what did I do when I first started because I, I, I felt the same way. Having, you know, for me to pay for someone to bring my projects to life, I couldn't do it. I was not the artist, I couldn't sketch. So I went out and I hired this, I was in Modesto and I, I hired this company to do my first sketch and it was like $400 back then. I knew right there that wasn't gonna work. That I knew that I was gonna need a lot of ideas and I was gonna have to submit to a lot of companies but if it cost me $400 to bring my ideas to life each and every time, it just was not going to be um, acceptable. So what did I do? I went and found a partner. Yeah, I did. I went ahead and called a, uh, an old friend of mine, Russell Hicks. I met him at Worlds of Wonder. Um, he, he illustrated all these wonderful Teddy Ruxman's books and then he went ahead and started illustrating for Disney. The guy was fantastic. So I knew right away that Russell Hicks was just a great artist. And so we, we, we teamed up. I would come up with ideas. I would tell Russell the ideas and he would draw them up and fax them over to me uh, really quick. So there was no cost. Um, and I did that for quite a few years. And eventually I even hired some other people when, when Russell kind of went his separate way. I still found a way of, of finding someone to bring my ideas to life, uh, basically for, I don't know, $15 to $10. And, and some of the ones I did here, you could see that they're just really rough sketches. I don't know if you can see that or not, but you know, those are just rough ideas. And that's all I really used. Um, but I had someone that could, uh, could build things. Also realized too, that I was very good at making things out of paper myself. So I could make ideas, make them out of paper, and of course I would take a picture of those too. Right, so I would always keep all my ideas in a binder like this, and I'd either have someone draw them up or I'd build paper prototypes. So very, very inexpensive. But what about, what about um, provisional patent applications? Now, $65 for most people is still very, very affordable. But for someone like me, and a lot of you out there, especially Tony, I think we have a lot of ideas. And going through the process, no matter how good at you, now, no, no, no matter how good you are at writing provisional patent applications, it's time consuming. Forget the money, it just takes a lot of time to do that. Well, when I first started out, there was no such thing as provisional patent applications. They didn't exist. So I didn't protect my ideas at all. There you go. Not at zero. I just felt that if I showed a company my idea and they liked it, they would pay me. And I also felt that I taught myself a, a system to come up with a lot of ideas and fast. They weren't all great, trust me. A lot of, most of them were terrible. Even the ones that sold well were, weren't that great. But I found a way of playing these games that allowed me to look at things and make small improvements. And those type of games, I write about it, one simple idea. They're basically kid games, like mix and match, taking two ideas over here, take one over here in one aisle of the store, go to another aisle of the store and you bring it together and, and create something brand new. I did that all the time. And guess what? I made connections, I made small, small improvements. And so coming up with ideas for me was not that difficult. I was, I was not that creative, but I found a system, right? To pull ideas out really, really quick. Um, so what, did that, what does that mean? That means I felt differently about my ideas. You see, I never felt like they were my babies. I didn't feel that way. I felt like ideas were just ideas and I loved them all, but some ideas were more profitable, 
more profitable than others, of course. But I still love them. I love the creativity. I love the, the, the magical thing that happened when you, came, when you would come up with an idea. So I didn't file provisional patent applications. Now, later on, let's go fast forward. When they first came on the, the scene, yes, I did start filing provisional patent applications because some of my ideas started to change. There wasn't like so many ideas, but um, the ideas were important to me because I was in industries that you had to have some type of perceived ownership. So I started filing those and I found a way. Now, trust me, I didn't file one of them. I always had someone, I had a team member, I had someone that worked for me that filed them all. So for me to say, yeah, it's easy. Well, yeah, it was easy for me to go, hey, do this. But, but it took some time, it took some training. So I had someone that could do it for me very, very quickly. But let's get back to the point. The point is, do you file for every idea? <gasps> Are you kidding me? I don't think so. I'm comfortable enough to know that if I submit an idea to a company and we start to talk about it, even if I hadn't filed because I still have a year, technically I have a year, that I can file, I can hang up the phone and within 24 hours I can file it. So I'm confident that if I get some interest, I can file it fast. I also know that I can get on the phone and get to people really, really quick to see if there's interest. So I'm comfortable in that gray area of not really, um, I'm not nervous and I'm not scared about it. I would not recommend that to anybody. Um, it works for me just because I've been doing it forever. I'm very comfortable about it because I don't think companies steal ideas and I don't think they're that quick and I don't think they're that creative. So you could do that. Now, the risk is that if you do not file because of the new laws, which mean that it's really first to file, someone could file. See, technically you have a year before you need to file that provisional patent application, but someone could come along and file before you. That's when it gets messy and that, that's when you'd have to prove that you were the first inventor. So anyway, Tony, great question. Hopefully that answers part of it of where I started, where I ended up, and my strategy a little bit. But don't get frustrated with the, the process. Learn how to do it. The first one's always the hardest. Second one just gets so much easier. If you have a lot of ideas, maybe get some interest first and file real quick. I can do that. I wouldn't recommend that to anybody. But also find a partner that can do your sell sheets. Maybe even find a partner that can do your PPAs and be willing to share the royalties. I was willing to do it because I could, I could, turn, I could churn out a lot of ideas faster if I had team members. There you go, that was a mouthful. Okay, once again, this is Stephen Key. Thanks for watching. Good question, Tony. Thank you very much.